Good morning guys. Today you join me on the bike trail. We're heading down to the swamp. The wife and I were here last night and of course I didn't bring a camera and there was the biggest beaver was out just sitting there eating. Uh, he was, he looked healthy. He was fantastic. Big beautiful spring beaver and I thought maybe there's a chance this morning if we get down here early enough he might still be out because these guys are mostly nocturnal right but they do come out in the daytime a little bit. But today what I want to talk with you guys about is the Sony 300 f2.8 lens. I've had this in my hands now for about 10 days and I've already got about 50 hours on it. So I just wanted to talk a little bit, you know, as a guy who's been shooting a Tamron 300 2.8 for the last 10 years, I bought that thing used, it's heavy, but there's something you get with these lenses that you don't with, you know, all of these zooms, the 15500, 15600, the Sony 200, 600. Um, you don't get that superior blurred out background, which makes your subject really pop, gives it a 3D look and feel. And to me, that is something that I strive to get in all my images. My best images are the ones where I've managed to achieve that, you know, get low, separate your animal or your bird and it, that's just the professional look, right? So the zoom has its place too. Um, you know, versatility with the zoom is amazing. But if you buy the two converters, 1.4 teleconverter, which I have on here today, and a two times teleconverter, you essentially get three lenses with this Sony, right? You put the 1.4 on there, and this becomes a 420 millimeter f4 lens. And if you put the two times teleconverter on there, it becomes a 600 millimeter f5.6 lens. Once you've got a two times cell converter on there, that's it. So this, the most you're ever gonna get out of this lens is 600 millimeters, unless you have a Sony a7R4 or five, then you can crop in. So what I like to do is I, I don't use APS-C mode. What that does is it zooms your field of view in a little closer. It gives you 26 megapixels instead of 60, but you're you know that much closer, 240 millimeters closer when you have the two times converter on there. Oh, here we are. And last night, the beaver was just sitting right there, chomping away. He wasn't afraid that we were here watching. He didn't care. He wasn't moving. It could have got some great shots. And that's always the way, right? Whenever I have the camera, these guys don't want to pose or sit around. And when I bring the camera, we get empty swamp. This lens is versatile as well if you own the teleconverters, as I say. You have to kind of know what you're going to go out and shoot for the day and you're going to put on that teleconverter beforehand to be ready. But you carry the other ones with you because you never know what you're going to see, right? You could be chasing deer and say, I want just a straight 300 millimeters. You can shoot deer at 75 meters away and two deer, three deer are going to fill the frame at 300 millimeters, okay? With a little bit of space around them. If you have the 1.4 on there, yeah, you can get them in there, but you're going to probably be cutting off one body, you know, something like that. You, you just learn these things the more you shoot. And then, of course, you carry that two times in your backpack because as you're chasing those deer, you might see an owl up in the tree, right? The difference is that this lens, you have to stop, take the converter off, the lens off, change converters, put it back on. Where the zoom, you just zoom in, zoom out, take your pictures, away you go. But for me, the image quality difference, this lens is in a completely different league, as it should be, for the price. So I paid $9,700 Canadian for this lens. But I'll tell you guys, I've used a lot of lenses. I own over 50 lenses. I have been shooting for 28 years. I've been shooting Sony since they took over Minolta. Back in the A100 days, the first cameras that came out with the A350, I owned that camera, the 500, the 550. I owned both of those cameras. So a long time, you know, 2008, I do have a lot of experience shooting Sony gear. I do have a lot of experience shooting a 300 because I own the Tamron 300 f2.8. And I can honestly say the difference with this lens, there's a couple of things that make this worth the purchase. And that's the weight, the size and the weight. Okay, this is the smallest 300 f2.8 ever made. And in terms of weight, it's 3.2 pounds. So some people still say, oh, that still seems heavy. But it's the way the weight is balanced on this build, right? The weight is down here at the end where the camera is. So when you pick it up, it's not front heavy. It's actually very comfortable to hold and that makes all the difference in the world. Now I wanted to go with the 400 
f2.8 or the 600 and i thought 600 is too much for what i do i like to do environmental leave some space around my subjects and the 400 would probably be perfect for me except that it weighs over six pounds so it's double the weight of this lens and it's like a foot longer so the handling it, there's something about having a lens that's this short my wife will tell you that <laughs> travel with this is a big reason why i bought this i can throw this in a bag and travel anywhere in the world and it will fit in my regular camera bag the 400 2.8 and 600 no i've got to carry a bigger bag more gear it just a lot more weight so this lens makes sense for me because i can also shoot sports with it my kids are in a lot of sports um we can shoot portraits with it i've been shooting a lot i've been chasing a lot more people with this i go down to the government dock and i'm just i'm people watching i'm taking shots as you guys have seen you know people on swings picnicking on their bikes um almost street photography at a 300 millimeter level and i'm enjoying that more than i ever thought i would image quality from this lens is top notch as would be expected i do not own a lens that is as sharp as this the bokeh is absolutely buttery smooth it is an amazing lens you cannot get better quality than this this is top of the line now if you compare this to other companies nikon and canon for example people are going to say that this lens is a lot at ninety seven hundred dollars Canadian that's with tax and everything and, and a three-year drop and spill warranty which I paid two hundred and some dollars for okay but if you look at the Canon offerings for example they are thousands of dollars more and two pounds heavier same as Nikon two pounds heavier for the old lenses so there is no comparison Sony has broken ground here again with this lens I had concerns that this lens would not autofocus as quickly as I wanted with the teleconverters and that was just simply unfounded guys this camera the a7r5 and lens combo the fastest focusing i've ever used with the teleconverters still blazingly fast you can do birds in flight with the two times converter and the 1.4 converter it it is that quick and the sharpness even with the two times converter is better than the 200 to 600 lens was maybe i had a bad copy of the 200 600 but i was not impressed with that 600 millimeters it dropped off substantially and then as soon as you put a teleconverter on the 200 to 600 i did not like the quality at all for close-up birds you know if you were in within 20 feet of a bird or something okay it was fine but as soon as you got the otter out on the ice out there 75 to 100 meters away i didn't like the quality it was not getting the detail i wanted this lens is even with the two times teleconverter new to photography I'm going to tell you guys something that um, some of my teachers and guys that were mentors to me many years ago 20 years ago would always tell us and it's absolutely true to this day glass over body okay and that simply means you buy the best glass that you can because 20 years from now you're still going to be using this glass where in five or six years from now this body is going to be replaced with the new a7r6 or 7 or whatever comes out next with the newest and greatest features but you're always going to use and own that top glass i still own lenses in my cupboard that are 30 years old and love to take them out and play with them as a wildlife photographer myself i wondered if 300 would be long enough you know for the small birds and things i chase and the simple answer to that is with the new bodies the a7r4 and 5 especially the 5 uh, 60 megapixels you can take this lens put the two times teleconverter on it and then shoot an aps-c mode at 26 megapixels so you're still getting uh, an image that's big enough that i print 24 by 36 inch canvases all the time with you know 24 megapixels and they turn out beautifully so you'd be at 840 millimeter equivalent field of view so if you're shooting anything other than small birds that is more than enough you can shoot deer you know at with just the 300 millimeter 50 to 75 meters away so i shoot moose i shoot deer i shoot all kinds of big animals porcupines beavers stuff like that the 840 millimeters you're not trying to pick something across the swamp and take a photograph of it right anyone can do that 
you take your cell phone and zoom in 10 times and say, whoa, I got a great photo. No, you didn't. And the same thing applies even with these high-end cameras. The closer you get, the better image you're going to get. So 840 millimeters in APS-C mode with a two-time teleconverter is more than enough with this lens. Just driving around here, I've put the two times teleconverter on. I'm checking out some waterways for ducks and geese. There is a couple of geese down here on a nest, so I took pictures of them. And then over here in front of me, we've got the train trestle, and it's got some graffiti on it. So I took a picture of that. Bigfoot Jack the Stripper. Is that one dancer? Or is that a duo? Bigfoot? Kind of a strange name for an exotic dancer. I thought it would have been big something else. I guess you know the old adage, what they say about guys with big feet. They wear big shoes. Going to pick up Gerald and we're gonna do an 80 kilometer run through the northern back roads, looking for wildlife, maybe some spring landscapes. Let's go for a drive. Well, we got a couple of deer here. Well, we made it down to the lake. Beautiful, serene. Two uh, other guys on the trail, two old guys out celebrating their birthday today, looking for wildlife, just hiking along. So we chatted with them for a few minutes, but pretty peaceful back in here other than that. And the weather is beautiful. Oh, oh. yeah. Spring is here. <laughs>